What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonners. Today is a special episode, they're all special really aren't they, but this one in particular because uh, it focuses on the most recent NXT TakeOver. TakeOver 25, it's 25th edition, anniversary, however you want to word it. It was spectacular like their previous 24 and I can't wait to get stuck into reviewing TakeOver 25 very, very soon. Before we do, just want to give you uh, the, the usual plugs so you know where to reach out to us on social media. Of course, we're on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is withjohnners underscore pod. Go and interact with us on Twitter. Of course, Instagram, instagram.com forward slash wrestling with Johnners is our handle on Instagram. Uh, we put up our new posts, photos um, every single day on Instagram. And of course, we've got the ever popular and uh, interactive Facebook group, the Wrestling with Johnners Facebook group. Just go onto Facebook. Search for the rest of Majona's Facebook page, and uh, yep, yeah, you can ask to be part of that that group today. Um, don't miss out. Of course, you can listen to this podcast on all popular and major podcast platforms: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Stitcher Radio, Anchor, Castbox, YouTube, wherever you get your, your podcasts. And we are expanding. We're we're on more and more podcast platforms. Um, on a week-to-week -week basis, so uh, I'm doing my best to really get us uh, some great availability out there um, in the world of in the world of podcasting, and to make sure that we are accessible to absolutely everybody. And remember, if you're listening to us on Apple iTunes, please don't forget to give us a five-star review. And of course, if you enjoyed listening to the podcast, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and shout about this podcast. Shout about wrestling with Johnners. This is the only podcast for all of your weekly NXT, NXT UK, WWE, Progress Wrestling, AEW, um, <laughs> NXT TakeOver needs. What more can I say? Um, so please spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your family and help to grow this podcast so that I can continue to grow uh, this, this uh, product, uh, continue to offer quality content each and every week to my lovely listeners. Um, so there we go. Don't forget um, to listen to our AEW Double or Nothing review, which I put out um, just over a week ago now, um, last weekend, just after the inaugural AEW pay-per-view Double or Nothing, which was an excellent show. You've got myself, Ash and Chris that talk for about 90 minutes uh, on Double or Nothing, and it's an excellent uh, review from an, an excellent show. Um, and uh, yeah, going into um, tonight's show or NXT Takeover 25 to see how you know how it would be comparable to AEW Double or Nothing. Uh, we know that there's nothing on the main roster at the moment, unfortunately, that would be comparable to Double or Nothing. Um, but uh, we've never been let down by an NXT Takeover, and we were pretty certain that we were going to get uh, something pretty special, um, and hopefully some sort of response uh, to how fabulous Double or Nothing was from last weekend. There was uh, quite a few things on the on the pre-show, um, if you caught it. There was uh, an appearance from Tommaso Ciampa, so we haven't seen a lot of him since um, he's been out injured, since he's had his neck surgery um, back in, I think it was uh, February or March of this year, of course, was uh, pulled from his scheduled um, WrestleMania takeover show with uh, a match with Johnny Gargano, of course. Uh, but he's, he's well on the uh, road to recovery. We've seen uh, photos and videos of him online, getting into training um, and uh, kind of being determined to be uh, a stronger and a better Tommaso Ciampa when he does finally come back to NXT. And he was uh, full of beans here on the pre-show, um, so much so that uh, he got pretty much uh, a, a tremendous reception um, and ovation from everybody that was there um, waiting for the main show to start. Tommaso Ciampa got a, a fantastic round of applause. He stood up on the announcer desk or the, the pre-show desk um, and really kind of uh, wound the crowd up, got them all excited. Um, he seemed to be loving every minute of it. Great to see Tommaso Ciampa, so energetic. Um, and uh, it looks like he's, he's recovering well. And uh, he's probably still a good six to eight months away from um, possibly taking any bumps or being anywhere near to uh, thinking about getting into a wrestling ring. We probably won't see him until uh, beginning of 2020 at the very earliest. And hopefully we'll see him in time for um, the takeover ahead of next year's WrestleMania. Who knows? We'll have to see. But he looked great on this occasion and, and uh, looked great. And uh, yeah, got a great reception. Um, before... Takeover kicked off. Uh, we, we got an opening video package um, taking us through the last five years of Takeover shows, and we've been lucky enough to have. Um, you know, I, I've been personally been lucky enough to been uh, at a Takeover show in New Orleans um, during WrestleMania 34 weekend. 
2018. It was probably the, the best wrestling show I've ever seen in the flesh uh, that I've ever been to live. And I hope that won't be the last one that I get to see uh, in the flesh. Um, and uh, yeah, um, hopefully I get to go to another kind of WrestleMania weekend somewhere down the line and catch some more NXT TakeOver action um, in the flesh. Of course, we, we, we have had an NXT TakeOver in the UK. There was the NXT TakeOver London from, I think, December 2015 when you had Finn Balor come out um, in his kind of demon costume but portraying like a Jack the Ripper uh, type of character in his match against Samoa Joe that was a really good uh, takeover of course we've had NXT TakeOver UK TakeOver Blackpool from January this year and that was another tremendous show and I loved every match on that card uh, in particular the, the opening match for the NXT UK tag titles the Grizzled Young Veterans versus Mustache Mountain and of course the uh, excellent Five-star main event, as far as I'm concerned, Joe Coffey versus Pete Dunne. Pete Dunne uh, defending his NXT UK or WWE UK Championship uh, during that match in a, in a tremendous, uh, nail-biting, dramatic match between those two. Um, and I, I, there were kind of rumours and tweets and Facebook posts going around social media on Saturday night ahead of uh, TakeOver 25 that uh, there was going to be some news uh, possibly about uh, another show coming to the UK or uh, a big um, happening uh, regarding NXT UK so we'll kind of talk more about that a little bit later on but that was the kind of buzz um, that led us into uh, NXT TakeOver 25 and of course it was being uh, uh, played out in Bridgeport, Connecticut uh, so, uh, yeah, they, they didn't name it NXT TakeOver Bridgeport or Bridge, uh, NXT TakeOver Connecticut. Um, they, of course, labelled it NXT TakeOver 25. Uh, we, we know why the reasons that was. Um, but uh, it, it was uh, not the kind of most glamorous or, or sexiest of, of, of towns to be hosting an NXT TakeOver, I suppose. Um, it was a sellout crowd. I've got to say, the, the lighting did throw me off a little bit. And I know that... Uh, um, just before the first match kicked off between Matt Riddle and uh, Roderick Strong, the lighting kind of panned up into the audience, left the ring in darkness for a few seconds, and panned back down, and it did seem very much what you'd find in, in a house show, to be honest with you, and it's very reminiscent, and I was going to mention this about the stage as well, the staging was very, very basic, where you kind of just had the, the, the basic entrance with the video screen above the entrance, you had quite a dark um, auditorium. You couldn't really see the fans. The focus was definitely on the ring with the lighting pointing at the ring. And it did come across uh, very much like a, a house show. And also very reminiscent of um, NXT, uh, the WWE Evolution pay-per-view from last October. Uh, the all-women's pay-per-view from WWE. And it wasn't the usual uh, big sets and big stage that you'd normally see from a WWE pay-per-view. Um, and uh, yeah, this was a little bit different to a normal... NXT TakeOver as well, I have to say, but um, it did allow us to focus a lot more on the action in the ring. Uh, the lighting did throw me off a little bit to start off with, it did seem a little bit darker. There's some kind of rumours that it was to kind of hide the, the gaps within the, the auditorium, that, that it wasn't a sellout. Um, I, I've, I've heard rumours that it was a sellout, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it as a, a kind of a sellout on this podcast, and um, I don't think there's been um, any... NXT TakeOver shows that haven't been a sellout, to be honest with you. that They always know how to pack them in. And of course, usually NXT TakeOvers normally happen on the eve of a big pay-per-view, maybe on the eve of a Royal Rumble or a SummerSlam or a Survivor Series or more recently a WrestleMania. Um, this was the first NXT TakeOver that took place um, that wasn't kind of being followed by a big WWE pay-per-view. And of course, it's the pay-per-view that helps to bring and draw the audience uh, that captive audience and the hardcore wrestling fans that would ultimately go and see other events around the big WWE pay-per-view, um, especially during the WrestleMania weekend. But uh, um, in particular, when you've got a SummerSlam or a Royal Rumble, people would come down to see that, and they would come down to see the NXT TakeOver that same weekend. This was the first standalone NXT TakeOver um, of its kind out of, the, out of the 25, and it did make a little bit of, bit of a difference. But uh, um, I, yeah, take my word for it, it was a sellout. The lighting um, was a bit strange, but it did allow us to focus on the action in the ring. Um, also, I, I've read reports that there were two pre-show matches that we will no doubt see on this week's uh, post 
TakeOver episode of NXT on the WWE Network. Uh, those pre-show matches were Keith Lee versus Kona Reeves and uh, Mia Yim versus Bianca Belair. Now, Mia Yim and Belair have wrestled twice before. It's, it seems to be one apiece between those two, so this was uh, a rubber match of sorts. Um, but um, we, we've had two excellent matches from those two. And great to see Keith Lee not on the main show. Uh, we'll talk more about Keith Lee and uh, why he's not been on uh, any, any of the NXT TakeOver's um, in the past, uh, towards the end of this episode, but he was in the pre-show against Kona Reeves, and um, yeah, uh, slightly more of a high-profile position in there for uh, for Kona Reeves and uh, Keith Lee. So we've spoken about uh, the staging, the, uh, the, the the lighting, and uh, the, the location. Let's go straight into the main show. So the first match on the card was uh, Roddy Strong, Roderick Strong from Undisputed Era versus the original Bro, the King of Bros, Matt Riddle. Now it's nice to see Roddy back in a, in singles action, and especially on an NXT Takeover. I think the only time we've seen him in a singles match at a Takeover um, was. Back when he first debuted with uh, NXT, and around the same time as when uh, Andrade, um, CN Andrade, uh, debuted in NXT, it's got to be a good close to two and a half, maybe three years ago now. And I remember that they wrestled each other in the opening match of that takeover where Roddy went over. Now, this was before. Uh, Andrade was aligned with Zelena Vega um, and of course that's when he kind of really develops that character with her as his kind of manager slash valet um, but so Roddy won that match uh, back when they wrestled at uh, that particular takeover um, and of course both wrestlers have kind of come on leaps and bounds since then uh, Roddy Strong has, has been a, uh, a vital part of Undisputed Era and Andrade of course former NXT champion um, had a great run on NXT when he was aligned with Zelena Vega and now upon to the main roster hopefully bigger and better things for him in the future um, he certainly looks to be kind of one of the main contenders for certainly the IC belt um, in the future and I believe he's going up against Finn Balor um, at the Saudi show this coming Friday. Um, but, uh, yep, yeah, we, we get a, a, a trifecta, as uh, Mauro Ronaldo would say, of a gut wrench suplexes or gut wrench slams for Matt Riddle on uh, Roddy Strong here to open the, open the match. Uh, the match goes to the outside where Strong drops Riddle back first onto the ring apron. That looked really, really painful. And as we know, the ring apron is the hardest part of the ring. Uh, Roddy punishes Riddle uh, back in the ring with a brutal backbreaker. Before stretching, Matt Riddle um, ribs first um, across the. He kind of stretched him over the ring post um, like a bow and arrow style, which looked really painful. But it, it wasn't kind of with the, the using the back. It was kind of more punishing Matt Riddle's ribs. And of course, Roddy Strong was really going to town and then punishing Matt Riddle's back and his ribs during this match. Uh, Strong gets a, a very close near fall from a, an Olympic slam, an angle slam. However, Riddle reverses a Canadian backbreaker, uh, transitioning into a brain buster. Matt Riddle comes back with a, a broton and a penalty kick for a two count of his own. Uh, Riddle gets another two count from a, a really lightning quick GTS, uh, followed by a bridging German suplex combo. So that was really good. Gets a two count on that uh, effort. There's a wicked top rope suplex or a superplex from Roderick Strong onto Matt Riddle, adding even further punishment to Riddle's already very injured back. And... Um, yeah, Matt Riddle did a fantastic job of, of selling his injury there, it, it, certainly in this match. There's an awesome sequence of strikes from uh, Roddy, followed by a huge front face slam, uh, but only getting a, a two count from that move once again. This match seems to find another gear, um, as Riddle misses a floating bro and uh, kicks out of a powerbomb from Roddy Strong. Um, Riddle eventually applies the, the bro mission, followed by a series of very stiff like MMA-style elbow strikes before hitting a, a gotch-style neutraliser. Um, yeah, it, it's been referred to as, as kind of like a, an inverted tombstone or um, some variation of a pedigree, but I, I kind of pinned it down to more of a gotch-style neutraliser, very similar to what Cesaro used to use as his original finisher back when he first debuted around about uh, uh, 2013, I think it was. Uh, that was one hell of a match. It went 15 minutes. We knew it was going to be tough. We knew it was going to be hard-hitting. Uh, both wrestlers really, really stepped up in this match. And I have to say, um, I, I, I think that they found several new gears uh, towards the end of this match. 
it obviously had its layers it obviously had its beginning its middle and an end um, but I thought it was it was uh, an awesome match I've actually rated this match four and a quarter stars and uh, Matt Riddle goes over um, yeah a, an excellent opener what more could you possibly ask for and I believe you know Roddy's last appearance at an NXT TakeOver was against Andrade um, a few years ago. I honestly believe that this is uh, Roderick Strong's best match in NXT. Um, for, for that matter, I think it was Matt Riddle's best match since joining the brand as well. So a great opener. And um, yeah, not the result that uh, Roddy Strong was looking for being part of uh, Undisputed Era uh, with them kind of dominating this show um, in, in three out of the five matches. Um, but uh, yes, he was on the, the losing end this time round with Matt Riddle going over and uh, bigger and better things, I think, uh, are in store for, uh, for Matt Riddle. I have come across online that uh, the finisher um, Matt Riddle is, 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 is I don't know if he's classing this as, as his finisher now or just a, another one of many moves that he puts his opponents away um, but I believe he's calling it the uh, bro Derek um, so I don't know if that's a, a play on words from a very famous uh, female Hollywood actress from the 1980s, uh, Bo Derrick. Um, but uh, yeah, from what I heard, and I think even Mario Ronaldo uh, described it as the, the Bro Derrick. Um, so yeah, you got you got the, the floating Bro, you got the uh, Bro Mission, the Bro Ton, now the Bro Derrick. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's going to expand on his um, kind of bro vocabulary with pretty much every wrestling move um that he that he wrestles uh going forward but um yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens to matt riddle this would say possibly his best match on nxt certainly his best match in an nxt takeover um we'll have to see whether that could possibly push him up the ranks as far as uh, being a future contender to uh, one of the belts fairly soon then we've got um, quite a unique match. Now, of course, the NXT tag titles were vacated a few weeks ago on NXT TV when the um, previous reigning champions, the War Raiders, uh, laid down the belts um, at the end of a match they had with the Street Profits and essentially um, ended their career with NXT um, cementing the fact that they're going to be kind of full-time on the main roster and vacated the NXT tag team titles all at the end of that, um, yeah, rather dramatic ending to that NXT uh, TV. Um, then it was announced the following week that there'd be four teams in contention uh, to go up against one another at TakeOver 25. Those four teams would be the Street Profits, the Forgotten Sons, Only Lorcan and Danny Birch, and Undisputed Era uh, in a fatal four-way ladder match uh, where the bouts would be hung up high above the ring, ladders all around the ring, and four... Uh, very good teams vying for the vacant titles. Now, as uh, Kieran Reid uh, quite rightly said on the prediction show last week, um, although Bobby Fish uh, has always been one of the original members of uh, the Undisputed Era, he has never won the tag gold in any of their previous two reigns. So this would have been an opportunity for the Undisputed Era to be three-time NXT Tag Team Champions. Um, but, uh, of course, the first time they won it was um, when Kyle O'Reilly was tagging with Adam Cole. Now it should have been Bobby Fish, but Bobby Fish uh, had his um, knee surgically repaired um, a few months before Takeover New Orleans last April. Um, and uh, yeah, Roddy Strong wasn't part of Undisputed Era at the time, so Adam Cole had to do double duty. He just won the North American Championship from that uh, six-man ladder match, uh, the opening match of that show in New Orleans, um, and then. Uh, it was either the next match or the third match in where he had to kind of pull double duty, team up with Kyle O'Reilly. And um, it was Roddy Strong's interference where he attacked his own partner, Pete Dunne, in that match that allowed um, Adam Cole or Kyle O'Reilly to, to pin Pete Dunne to win their first NXT tag titles. Uh, and that's when Roddy Strong put on the armband and officially became part of uh, uh, UE. And uh, yeah, so Adam Cole partnered Kyle O'Reilly when they first won the championships. Uh, later on in 2018, of course, they had a, a rivalry with um, Mustache Mountain and British Strong Style. And of course, uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Roddy Strong lost the tag titles at the Royal Albert Hall in June in 2018 to Mustache Mountain. Um, and uh, that was a, an amazing night at the Royal Albert Hall. Fantastic for Tyler Bate and Trent Seven and Mustache Mountain. And of course, uh, they... Tyler Bate and Trent Seven lost the titles a few weeks later during an episode of NXT back in full sale um, in an excellent 
I have to say a five star match where there was so much uh, selling from uh, from Mustache Mountain and Trent Seven and Tyler Bates uh, where I, I believe the towel was thrown in and uh, the match was won and that was the, the second championship for Undisputed Era, second tag gold in NXT but of course that was Roddy Strong and Kyle O'Reilly so Bobby Fish as I mentioned he's one of the original members of UE but he's never won any gold um, or never been uh, part of a successful tag team uh, for the uh, NXT tag gold so this was his opportunity he was, he was teaming up with uh, Kyle O'Reilly of course uh, so, uh, yeah, good spot there from Kieran Reid on last week's prediction episode. So to go through some of the, the highlights of the match, Angelo Dawkins hits the first high spot of the night with a huge dive from the top turnbuckle uh, to the outside onto the other three teams. Um, and that was a really, really good spot. So you're going to get spots like that in, in a match like this. But uh, from, from such a big guy, but quite an athletic guy like Angelo Dawkins, that was an impressive sight to see. Kyle O'Reilly takes a tremendous tumble um, off of a ladder, landing back first um, onto the side of the ladder. Now that looks painful. He kind of uh, writhed around in, in pain. He, he fell to the outside. Um, he really did look in a lot of pain. And we'll, we'll talk more about Kyle O'Reilly and Kyle O'Reilly's back in particular a bit later on. O'Reilly then nearly gets his head taken off. Uh, you had the Forgotten Sons who had um, uh, one of the big ladders in the centre of the ring. They were doing like a, an aeroplane spin with the ladder until they were stopped by uh, Danny Birch and only Lorkin, uh, who German suplexed uh, the two members of the Forgotten Sons, uh, Blake and Cutler, backwards, sending the ladder that they were holding flying backwards. Um, and Kyle O'Reilly was on the other side of the ring when the ladder was coming down. It nearly killed Kyle O'Reilly. So that was that was kind of, uh, yeah, life number two that, that Kyle O'Reilly uh, lost during this match. Um Montez Ford suffers a, a German suplex onto the ladder um, that was lent up against the ropes. That looked pretty painful. Kyle O'Reilly then gets power bombed into uh, an upright ladder with Bobby Fish climbing the ladder at the time, um, sending both members of the Undisputed Air crashing down hard to the canvas. And uh, I believe Bobby Fish actually fell into Kyle O'Reilly as he crashed down off the ladder there. Um, everyone is putting their bodies on the line in this match, especially Kyle O'Reilly. There's so many big moves from all four teams in this match. Uh, there's a super blockbuster from the Street Profits and a, a doomsday device from uh, Lorkin and Birch onto the Forgotten Sons. And then uh, Jackson Riker, the kind of the leader, the matriarch, the the uh, yeah the, the leader of the Forgotten Sons comes down. He enters the ring. He clears house initially, um, including sending sending Angelo Dawkins crashing off the ladder before beating Dawkins down with the ladder in the corner. Uh, Ryder is on a bit of a rampage, certainly beating down Angelo Dawkins, um, and of course. Jackson Riker is not even meant to be part of the match um, until he gets beaten down by uh, Undisputed Era, the Street Profits, and Birch and Lorkin. So you've got six members um, of the opponent of the opposing team beating down Jackson Riker. Um, O'Reilly, um, his back at this point, there was a close-up of his back, and it looked like he had two fairly deep gashes and some other marks and welts on his back where he had the, the earlier bumps onto the ladder and where he'd been kind of, uh, yeah, beaten to a pulp on his back in particular during this match. Then... Um, Montez Ford nearly nearly kills himself with a huge tope over the top rope, um, barely being caught by Jackson Riker, who was on the outside at this point. The end of the match does come when uh, Blake and Cutler topple um, Fish and O'Reilly, Birch and Lorkin from the ladders that they were uh, climbing. Blake then scales the ladder towards the belts. Angelo Dawkins makes his way back into the ring and, and, and kind of runs and, and uh, charges and spears underneath the erect ring at the, at the uh, kind of erect ladder um, in the ring. Spears Cutler underneath the ring, which was impressive in itself. Then from out of nowhere, completely out of shot, you saw uh, Montez Ford. Um, who is one hell of an athletic son of a gun. Um, he slingshots himself out of view, out of camera shot, off the top rope, uh, landing pitch perfectly onto the ladder that was uh, set up in the ring where um, Cutler was climbing, just reaching up for the to, to unhook the belts. Um, and uh, yep, so like I say, Ford lands pitch perfect, stares Cutler dead in the eyes. It was an impressive visual to see this um, before smashing Cutler off the ladder, reaching up, grabbing both belts, unhooking them. Montez Ford wins the match for the Street Profits and uh, Montez Ford, Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits, now the new NXT Tag Team Champions um, after 21 and a half minutes. 
such uh, a great match. So much action in this match. Kyle O'Reilly, I think he was my kind of man of the match, my, my MVP for this uh, four-team ladder match for the vacant titles. He took some impressive bumps in this match. Um, and, uh, yeah, wow. Um, we have new champions and the Street Profits. Before, they were used as a bit of a joke team, um, weren't involved in any serious feuds, kind of much along the same vein as uh, um, Heavy Machinery, for example. Um, but then, you know, they've been getting involved uh, in, in kind of more serious feuds. Uh, they've had a kind of a bit of an ongoing feud with the Forgotten Sons over the last few months. Uh, they've had a little bit of a, a run with uh, the Viking Raiders, just ahead of the Viking Raiders, uh, vacating their championships. And uh, yeah, that they've been kind of high up on many people's list now for several weeks, if not months. In particular, if nothing else, because of Montez Ford. Montez Ford is one hell of a, an athletic dude. Um, he's got the best frog splash in the business, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, what that guy you know, can't do in the ring isn't even worth mentioning, to be honest with you. I think, you know, even if these two are up on the main roster, I think that they'll be wowing people out of their seats. Um, Angelo Dawkins, to give him credit, he's really come into his own. I think the superstar of the team, of course, is Ford, and we talk a lot about Ford, but when you pay attention to Angelo Dawkins in this match alone, that, you know, that, that dive that he took, uh, that risk off the top turnbuckle to the outside onto the other six members um, of the match was impressive, and that was one of the, the first spots of the match. Um, yeah, he took a lot of punishment in this match. That kind of uh, that dive and that spear through the ladder underneath the rad ladder at the end of the match um, on Blake was impressive, and that enabled Montez Ford to do that springboard dive onto the ladder, stair cutler dead in the eyes, uh, knock him off the ladder, and then retrieve the belts. Um, and I think, um, yeah, a deserving victory, a deserving winner in the Street Profits, and these two. Fantastic, really, really pleased for them, really, really proud uh, and happy for the progress they've made and for their performance on Saturday night. And there's actually a behind the scenes YouTube video video on um, uh, on YouTube, uh, the kind of WWE PC channel. And go ahead and check uh, check out, there's lots of good content on there. But this one in particular showed kind of the, the, the pre-match build-up where Ford and uh, Dawkins were talking about how this was kind of a lifelong dream. And this was actually, believe it or not, uh, their first ever takeover match um, and it was the first ever takeover match for uh, the Forgotten Sons as well and I thought they were tremendous uh, undisputed area you know what you're going to get from them and uh, Birch and Lorkin um, are just super tough um, and are really going to give you one hell of a match so you had four really good teams in this match as far as I'm concerned um, I don't know whether the the inclusion of Jackson Riker um, really added to the match to be honest with you it, it kind of did it did add a little bit of an extra layer to the story um, but uh, yeah check out this YouTube video from the WWE PC YouTube channel where you've got the, the, the pre-match build up where Dawkins and Ford were talking about how this was a lifelong dream to be part of a, a takeover match and to you know be part of a championship match at takeover um, and then you had crowd reaction from relatives of Montez Ford and, and Dawkins. Uh, you had their, their parents and their relatives. You had Bianca Bellera, of course, he's married to Montez Ford in the crowd as well. And there was lots of drama um, because of the action in the ring and the, what a fantastic match this was. And then the reaction afterwards when they retrieved the belts and backstage reaction as well. Um, really, really good showed a lot of passion, uh, a lot of drama and a lot of excitement from this uh, very, very exciting duo and I can't wait to see more from them. Um, I'm going to give this match four and a half stars. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think I've got it up there as we're be, being, you know, possibly my match of the night. Um, but we'll talk more about, uh, you know, all five matches at the end of this podcast. But four and a half stars, I, I really, really loved it. Match three out of five. Uh, this one is for the North American Championship, and it's Tyler Breeze making his NXT return um, from a rather uh, uninspiring um, kind of last two or three years. I think he's been on the main roster for three years now, and his um, tag team run with Fandango with the Fashion Police, um, but uh, rather uninspiring run, which has been hampered by kind of injuries, mostly to Fandango, which has kind of put Tyler Breeze on the shelf as well. And he's made a, a recent return. Um, he has been doing a lot of the NXT house show loops around Florida, um, and he has had uh, kind of, uh, shall we say, practice matches against uh, Velveteen Dream. And of course, there was one uh, match that um, part of it got leaked because the, the referee to that match, that was, that was the occasion where the 
the, the referee, and the, his name escapes me, that's when he, he broke his ankle in the ring and was still able to perform the three counts um, at the end of that match. He quite a, a heroic display from that referee. And I'm sure he's got a job for life after what he did there. Um, but uh, this is, um, yeah, we, we saw Tyler Breeze make his, made his official NXT return on last week's uh, TV show where he uh, confronted Velveteen Dream, um, challenged him for the North American Championship, hit him um, with his uh, phone um, in what was meant to have been a, a selfie at the end of their segment. And uh, that set up the, their match for tonight. Um, so yeah, very nice to see Tyler Breeze back on kind of his original stomping ground. He's one of the original um, NXT wrestlers who uh, was was in the, the first ever NXT Takeover. It wasn't even called Takeover the first one. The first one was called NXT Arrival, um, and he was in that. Uh, was in the first ever NXT Takeover, which was their next show. Was in some really really key matches. I think he he, he challenged uh, for the. Um, NXT Championship in one takeover early on, and I believe it was a four-way match which involved um, Adrian Neville, Tyler Breeze, of course. I think it had Tyson Kidd, and I believe it had uh, either Bo Dallas or Sami Zayn, possibly Bo Dallas as well. And I think that was the match where Bo Dallas uh, won the championship. But um, yeah, the the amazing thing to kind of note here is that in Tyler Breeze's entire career, whether it be in developmental the early days of NXT being promoted onto the main roster, he's never won championship gold. Um, there's also that, that legendary match he had with Jushin Thunder Liger at uh, the first ever NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, and that was the, the show where you had that kind of five-star match for the NXT Women's Championship between um, Sasha Banks and Bayley. Uh, that was the highlight of that show, but one of the other highlights was the opening match, um, the opening contest of that show where Jushin Thunder Liger uh, wrestled his first and only ever match in a WWE ring, and it was on an NXT takeover, like I say, the first ever Brooklyn show, and uh, Tyler Breeze had the, the honour and the privilege to wrestle this Japanese legend, uh, Jushin Thunder Liger. Um, Tyler Breeze lost the match, but it was, a, it was a fantastic match. He credited it as being his best um, ever match um, in his career up to that point. Um, and then soon after, that's when he uh, got promoted onto the main roster. We don't want to talk about his run on the main roster. It really isn't kind of, um, you know, worthy of, of kind of uh, any sort of mention, to be honest with you. Um, and it's a shame that he was mishandled and not used. And he had, a, 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 you've got to say, a perfect gimmick for the main roster with his kind of male model gimmick and the, the, the selfie, um, you, you know, gimmick as well. Um, it's a shame they didn't do more with it. It is official. Triple H has announced that Tyler Breeze is now a permanent member of the NXT roster. So we'll be seeing a lot more of him on the black and gold brand. And uh, who's to say that we don't see more of him, uh, you know, vying for championship gold in the future. Um, but just to go through some of the, the key spots um, of this match against the Velveteen Dream, who is, of course, the defending NXT North American champion. Um, yeah, I've got to say Tyler Breeze looks good in the opening few minutes of this match. Uh, Tyler crotches uh, the Velveteen Dream against the the ring post before wrapping the Dream's left leg around the uh, the ring post um, in that same spot. Dream gets uh, some of his own back by smashing Breeze's head against the announce desk, announcer's desk uh, before taking a selfie with Breeze and the North American Championship in a, in a funny little segment there with uh, Breeze seemingly kind of being out of it after being uh, smashed um, over the, uh, the head and then dumped on the announcer's desk. Velveteen Dream gets a, a two count from the first Death uh, Dream Valley driver in this match. Breeze was able to slide out of a, a Dream DT, um, getting a two count from a, a super kick. Breeze then connects with a, a drop kick, catching a Dream out of midair. So that was an impressive sequence. Dream gets another two count from uh, another Dream DT. Uh, then Velveteen misses a Purple Rainmaker elbow, with Breeze bringing up his knees just in the nick of time to block the uh, the elbow. Tyler Breeze very nearly gets the, the, the win and the pinfall here with an Unprettier. But the Velveteen Dream kicks out at the last split second. That was a very, very close near fall. Tyler um, hits a, uh, a, a flying leg lariat, uh, which manages to knock his opponent, the Velveteen Dream, out of the ring, which would have almost certainly been a pinfall victory for, for Tyler Breeze had, the, had Dream stayed in the ring from, uh, um, from that move. Breeze 
then goes out of the ring. Um, he, he can't see... He, 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 both guys are exhausted at this point. He can't physically lift the Velveteen Dream to get him back into the ring. The referee is counting. He's getting close to the 10 count. Tyler Breeze gets back into the ring to interrupt the count, to stop the count, and to basically look, beg to the referee, look, this is my only opportunity. I, I need this match. I need this win. Um, let the match continue. Don't continue counting, because if the Velveteen Dream gets counted out, uh, then Tyler Breeze you know, wins the match, but he doesn't win the gold. We know how it works in the WWE. Uh, Valentin Dream kind of comes to, he attempts to bring the championship gold, the, the title into the ring, only for Tyler Breeze to pull the title out of uh, the Velveteen Dream's hands. Um, but then Dream takes advantage of the situation with a, a Dream Valley driver out of nowhere, a very quick Purple Rainmaker elbow. He hooks the leg, and in a very quick sequence of events, the Velveteen Dream gets the 1 2 3 and a successful title defense of the North American Championship in an excellent match uh, that went 17 minutes. So it's unfortunate that there's lots of action, a really good story here uh, between. Tyler Breeze between the Velveteen Dream, the, the belt coming into play, the referee towards the end. Um, I've given this a, a, a four star match. I, I think it was an excellent match. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I thought the story was excellent. I thought Tyler Breeze reminded us of how good he actually was back in kind of the original uh, good old days of, of NXT when he was vying for the NXT Championship. He did remind us of how good he was because. People that have only tuned into WWE and are only familiar with Tyler Breeze from WWE main roster will not know unless they've gone back on the network or on the various highlight DVDs that are available from NXT. They will not know of his good work from you know his matches against Jushin Thunder Liger and the various championship matches that he, that he had um, and the, the amazing feuds that he had as well. Um, how good Tyler Breeze was back in the day. And this reminded um, everybody that was familiar with him and uh, basically sent out a statement to anybody that hadn't come across uh, Tyler Breeze before how good this guy was. And I'm so glad that he's sticking around on the NXT brand. Afterwards, um, Tyler Breeze takes a selfie with the Velveteen Dream. And it seemed to kind of bookend their feud, to be honest with you. It, there was no shots over the head with the, the phone. Um, and yeah, it looked like uh, that was the end of th this chapter. It could possibly mean that uh, the, the Velveteen Dream, Tyler Breeze, are moving on to new opponents. Um, it, it could potentially lead to, a, to another match between the two of them. I wouldn't be disappointed if it did. This match was excellent. Um, but uh, it did seem to kind of draw a line under, under their feud. Just so I'll have to see after... This week's TV tapings, whether there's a, anything more to, uh, to, to, to these two. And then we get a, a video promo, a uh, video package uh, featuring Damien Priest, the former Punishment Martinez from uh, Ring of Honor. Now, this guy is, is, uh, is tall, he's athletic, um, he looks good. They, the video package saw him getting a, a new tattoo and, you know, he, he, he's got a good look and uh, very popular amongst the boys, very popular amongst, uh, you know, um, other indie type wrestlers that have come up over the years. Uh, we haven't really seen much of him. We've seen him, I think, in one or two matches on NXT TV, but it's actually been on the kind of the losing end. But now they're really getting behind uh, the promotion of Damian Priest, um, and uh, no doubt we will see a lot more of him uh, fairly soon. And no doubt he'll be part of some uh, featured matches on this week's uh, tapings uh, from Full Sail, which we uh, will hopefully see over the coming weeks. Match number four out of five, uh, Shayna Baszler defends her NXT Women's Championship against Io Shirai. So this is the first singles match that these two have had in an NXT ring. Now they have had matches in Japan with uh, Io Shirai um, winning um, their match or matches that they had in, in Japan. But it's the first time they faced each other in an NXT ring on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Now Io Shirai was part of the women's four-way at um, the pre-WrestleMania NXT TakeOver New York uh, this past April. And of course it was uh, Shayna Baszler, Io Shirai, Kairi Sane and uh, Bianca Belair. Shayna Baszler managed to retain. Now... Shayna, of course, is a two-time women's champion in NXT, um, but uh, Io Shirai, I had her paid as the favourite and the, the winner coming out of this match. 
Um, but uh, there's all sorts of signs and chatter and you know in indications that Shayna might be going up to the main roster fairly soon. But then that's been the, the chatter for um, yeah, what best part of a year now. Um, but uh, she, she's obviously joined up with uh, kind of MMA buddies, um, Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir, and uh, they're obviously building a, a faction there now. Duke and Shafir aren't kind of fully signed off as far as being uh, uh, capable wrestlers in their own right. Uh, when they have wrestled as a team, they, they've, they've been on the, the, the losing end, certainly in matches against uh, Io Shirai and Kairi Sane from uh, a few months back. Um, so I think that's kind of more of a developing duo that we'll see more of going forward um, but uh, maybe they're waiting for those two to be fully developed um, and main rest, main roster ready uh, sorry before uh, they promote Shayna and they're looking to maybe promote uh, Shayna and uh, Duke and Shafir as a combo as a unit but uh, going into this match uh, Io Shirai certainly takes the fight to Shayna Baszler with a, a delayed uh, drop kick to the face of the champ um, and uh, then another drop kick um, through the ropes uh, to Baylor on, uh, Baszler on the outside. So a really super quick start to this match with um, Shirai on the offense. Shayna executes her reality check stomp onto uh, Io's left elbow, which looked brutal, and it always does when Shayna does that. Um, she's done it many times before to Dakota Kai and to Kairi Sane um, and uh, Bianca Belair, which had Belair in tears during their takeover match in Phoenix from January, if you remember. Um, but absolutely brutal move, and I can't see how that move can be executed without hurting her opponent. Uh, so it certainly looks real. I'm sure it feels real as well. Uh, Bezo then uh, focuses her attention on Io's uh, um, left uh, wrist and elbow following uh, the brutal stomp from earlier, of course. Uh, Shirai does manage to execute a delayed German suplex on uh, Baszler, um, but was uh, in too much pain to maintain the bridge for the cover. Um, Shirai does manage to hit a springboard drop kick off the ropes before applying a cross face, which Shayna was able to power out of. Shirai once again sends Baszler to the outside with a drop kick, sending the champ over the top rope. Um, Shirai then hits her, her trademark moonsault uh, onto Baszler from the top turnbuckle to the outside, which is always impressive when uh, Io does that. Io uh, looks like she's getting the upper hand in this match when uh, Shafir and Duke, the, aforeman the aforementioned uh, uh, MMA um, cohorts of, uh, of uh, Baszler, of course, they make their way out. Uh, but before they could reach the ring, Candice LeRae comes out uh, with kendo sticks in hand to fend off uh, Shafir and Duke and to the point where, yeah, boy, uh, she really walloped those two to the point where you saw um, bits of kendo stick and uh, shards of kendo stick fly up in the air and uh, she really walloped uh, Shafir and Duke with those kendo sticks, kind of um, making them a, a bit of a, a non-factor uh, non for the rest of this match. Um then, after ducking a moonsault from Io Shirai, Baza is finally able to slap on her Karafuda clutch in the centre of the ring. And after having the move applied for what seemed like forever, but it was it was, it was probably close to two minutes, Io Shirai finally taps out. And Shirai, she did fight. She did try to reverse the move and roll out of the move and reach the ropes. But every time, Baza just uh, um, locked on the hold, even more secure, even more firm. Um, and uh, yeah... You either, um, you know, tap, nap or snap, I think, is, is the saying from uh, Shayna Baszler. And um, whereas we've seen Nikki Cross um, nap from the move and we've seen Bianca Belair tap, uh, where we saw Io Shirai do the same here and tap out um, after struggling to get out of the move unsuccessfully. After the match, um, Shirai then kind of recovers, viciously attacks uh, Baszler with uh, several very, very stiff kendo stick shots before landing a moonsault from the top rope, um, her trademark moonsault. Then Shirai, she gets handed a steel chair from Candice LeRae, who is still at ringside, and um, in almost in, in the vein of um, mid-90s ECW Sabu, uh, Shirai kind of holds the steel chair to her chest up on the top rope performs another moonsault on uh, Shayna Baszler, landing the moonsault with the chair sandwiched between herself and um, Baszler in the ring. And that looked like that move sucked, to be honest with you. So not only was uh, the champion, um, Shayna Baszler, left 
writhing in pain and struggling to breathe possibly from broken ribs but she certainly had lots of welts and uh, and bruises and cuts to her back from the kendo stick shots she certainly seemed to be suffering uh, from the post-match attack from from a baby face Io Shirai but uh, yeah I'd, I'd say that she was more of a heel on that attack but um, I believe that was done to set up um, another match a rematch between these two where there might be stipulations or gimmicks or weapons involved no doubt um, as I said, that the camera then kind of pans and gets a close-up of Baszler's back. Um, and yeah, yeah, she looked uh, pretty brutalised after that attack from Shirai. Shirai makes her way back to the uh, locker room area with Candice LeRae. And uh, yeah, uh, but Baszler, um, although you wouldn't uh, notice it from the shape of her back, was successful. And uh, she uh, retains her championship. Now, I, I went out on a limb on the prediction show last week and said that Io Shirai would win. I thought it was the right time for Baszler to lose her championship. And like I say, there's obviously no plans to move Baszler up onto the main roster yet because she's managed to retain. But what I loved about this was, um, you know, how the Karafuda clutch is, is being put over as such a dominant hold, such a, a, a dominant move and submission hold. And you don't get many moves like that nowadays. And before, yes, you know, the sharpshooter was always kind of the move that nobody got out of or everybody tapped to. And you've obviously got uh, uh, the, the key lock that um, Brock Lesnar uses, uh, you know, to win many of his match by submission and so on and so forth. But you don't get many uh, many submission moves that uh, the company puts over to the point where, you know, it's almost uh, such a, a dominant move that you have no choice but to either pass out or, or tap. Um, and, uh, yeah, Shayna Baszler putting the move to, to great effect. Um, and uh, she's looking more and more dominant every single match. And uh, to be honest with you, if they've got no plans on moving up to the main roster, then I say, you know, keep the bout on her for a, a, as long as possible. Certainly with the Karafuda clutch um, being such a dominant hold and, and putting away so many opponents. Um, and uh, once again, Shayna coming out on top, retaining the championship. The match went 12 minutes. Um, I thought it was the, the right length of, of time um, for the match. Um, and I'm going to give this, again, uh, similar to the Tyler Breeze and Velveteen Dream match, four stars. I think it was fantastic and one of the best women's matches I've seen this year. Credit to those two. But I do expect a rematch, possibly at NXT TakeOver Toronto, which is taking place over SummerSlam weekend in August. So only a couple of months away. Um, and I do expect maybe a, a, a gimmick match um, between those two. Uh, Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler, of course. Then we head into our main event. Johnny Gargano, the defending NXT champion versus uh, Adam Cole. And uh, yeah, this is a, a rematch from their match in New York uh, when uh, Johnny Gargano won the vacant NXT Championship um, at the time against Adam Cole in the two out of three falls match. Um, and um, yeah, it, it was uh, labelled as a five-star classic from everybody, uh, possibly the, the best match in NXT history, even surpassing Johnny Gargano's excellent main event match against Andrade from early 2018 um, and uh, yeah um, this was a, an excellent match as well and we'll, we'll go through it and see if it's comparable to their five star two out of three falls match from uh, from New York in April but there's uh, a lot of booze for Johnny Gargano that was very noticeable before the match started from, from his entrance he was wearing like a Captain Marvel sort of uh, Johnny Gargano uh, outfit here um, and, and much louder cheers for Adam Cole, who's meant to be the heel. Go figure. Um, Gargano goes after Adam Cole's left arm uh, with a kind of double stomp uh, across Cole's arm um, as he rested it against the ring apron. So that looked pretty brutal. You, you've seen it where people come down with a double stomp onto people's backs um, or uh, people's shoulders. But um, to, to kind of the arm, it did look pretty brutal. And uh, yeah, it, it could have um, yeah potentially have broken the arm. But yes... Um, Obviously, they know what they're doing, uh, but that kind of set the scene for Gargano going after Adam Cole's um, arm for the rest of the match off of this move. Cole then gets some retribution with a super kick and a DDT and a missile drop kick, uh, this time to the right knee of Johnny Gargano. So there's a story of uh, uh, Cole's left arm and Gargano's right knee during the course of this match. Gargano is able to turn an attempted drop kick from Cole into a sit-out powerbomb. Cole then catches Gargano in midair with an impressive backstabber for a, a two-count. There was an exchange of super kicks between these two with both men crashing to the outside. 
Cole then hits uh, two Ushiguroshis, uh, with Cole only managing to get uh, a two count, um, very, very close uh, near fall. Uh, Gargano is able to uh, lock in the Gargano escape onto Adam Cole, um, but then Cole is able to transition this into a figure four leg lock onto Gargano, which Gargano is able to reverse uh, after grabbing the injured leg of Adam Cole. Um, Gargano then nails Adam Cole with a DDT, but misses a dive through the ropes, which Cole, uh, with Cole na- nailing a an awesome, um, a, you know, an awesome um, pinpoint super kick to the champion um, on the dive through the ropes. Cole then hits a Panama Sunrise on Gargano on the outside of the ring, uh, but but when he gets Gargano back in the ring, he can only get a two count for his troubles off of that awesome Panama Sunrise. Gargano avoids Cole's last shot running knee. Uh, Cole applies a Gargano escape. So Adam Cole applies Johnny Gargano's uh, Gar- Gargano escape on Johnny Gargano. Ironically enough, uh, Gargano slides out of this and connects with Adam Cole's last shot. So they're kind of exchanging finishing moves here um, and very nearly gets a three count um, off of the last shot running knee there. Uh, this match has got everybody on their feet by this point, so it's really hit another gear. Everybody's really into every single move. Uh, there's super kicks, there's lariats, there's a reverse Rana um, that Adam Cole, in my opinion, no sold. Uh, there's a last shot um, that, from Adam Cole for another close near fall. There are massively loud NXT chants from the fans, um, and uh, yeah. Fever pitch, you have to say. Cole goes to the outside to grab a steel chair from underneath the ring. Uh, Gargano comes through the ropes with a huge dive, uh, but taking out the referee in the process. Uh, Cole then signals for the rest of the Undisputed Era, um, O'Reilly, Fish and Roddy Strong, um, to, to possibly come out and interfere. But it was all just a trick. It was all just a ruse. Uh, Gargano is playing possum. Um, and Cole is able to get another two count on Johnny Gargano. Gargano applies the Gargano escape once again, pretty much from out of nowhere, uh, but is eventually able to find his way um, out of the move to hit a second Panama Sunrise, followed by um, his last shot running knee. He hooks the leg of Johnny Gargano and gets the one, two, three, and he becomes the NXT, the new NXT champion. So there we go. It, it was an excellent fast paced match, a great story. Lots of um, uh, kind of reversals and Cole and Gargano using each other's finishing moves and the selling of the the leg of uh, Cole and uh, of, of Gargano, sorry, and the the uh, the, the arm um, of uh, Gargano. It's the other way around, actually. My apologies, but that was a super hot match with both wrestlers exchanging yeah moves, so many transitions. It was it was an, a really good match. I don't think it was as good as their match at uh, Takeover New York, if I'm perfectly honest with you. Um, it went 33 minutes. Um, I do think it was the match of the night, though. I'm going to give it um, four and a half stars here. Um, it, it was excellent. Um, and uh, yeah, more importantly, that the story ends with new NXT champion and Adam Cole, who's always been uh, the bridesmaid and never the bride. Um, he beats Gargano. Now, kind of another story coming off the back of this is, is Gargano, I believe, lost his North American championship to the Velveteen Dream in Gargano's first defense of that championship. And Gargano once again loses the NXT Championship on his first defense um, on an NXT TakeOver. And I think his, his first defense full stop since winning the gold at TakeOver New York in April. And Gargano, it's been reported that he's been on lighter duties, he's been carrying a bit of an injury. Uh, but, but Cole has been chasing and chasing and chasing. And uh, yeah, a worthy champion. And. Um, I've been championing Adam Cole for a long time, uh, as have many of my listeners, uh, followers on the various social media platforms and uh, a very kind of popular choice. Um, is he really a heel? I would say Adam Cole is more of a baby face, if I'm honest with you, regarding you know what sort of reaction he gets when he comes out in his entrance, the kind of boom uh, on the music and the Adam Cole baby. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, it'll be exciting to see where we go from here. You know, will there be uh, a Cole and Gargano three? Um, you know, are they likely to face each other again at the next takeover, which is in Toronto in August, of course, or will Cole kind of move on to another, you know, uh, another rival, another contender? What will happen to Gargano? Is he going to get called up to the main roster? He's had a bit of a stop and start uh, start there, as far as that's concerned. He originally went up in February with uh, Champa. We all know what happened there. 
Um, but uh, this was an excellent match um, to uh, draw an end to an excellent uh, show. Um, I just want to also mention that the other three members of the Undisputed Air did come out eventually um, at the end of the match after all was said and done. So you had Kyle uh, O'Reilly, Bobby Fish and Roddy String- Strong come out to celebrate with uh, Cole in the middle of the ring. They lifted up Cole, um, celebrating as a unit, which is great to see. Um, and um, yeah, what a match, what a show. Uh, some people are calling it the best takeover ever, but then we say that at the end of every takeover, don't we? Um, I personally feel that I've attended the best takeover ever, um, um, NXT uh, TakeOver New Orleans from last April, but then I would say that because I was there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the TakeOver Phoenix was excellent. TakeOver New York from this year was excellent. Um, and uh, TakeOver uh, 25 um, from here in uh, in uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut was excellent as well. Um, stars of the night, in my opinion, definitely the Street Profits. I thought Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford, very worthy excellent new uh, tag team champions um, and I'm so pleased for those two they really come on in terms of their characters in terms of their, their profile and wrestling ability and uh, they've really put on some excellent matches and definitely uh, worthy of uh, carrying the gold it'd be interesting to see what happens with them going forward Kyle O'Reilly definitely the MP, MPV the man of the match uh, the man that took the most amount of punishment in that ladder match there were photos of his his back uh, online um, uh, soon after the match, was certainly the next day. Um, and yeah, it was cut, it was bruised, it was welted. I, I, I bet he uh, kind of had trouble getting up the following morning. But definitely uh, the match of uh, the man of the match and possibly the man of the night, uh, Shayna Baszler, you know, dominant win of Io Shirai, uh, being a very dominant champion. Um, I've got her down as a, a bit of a, a badass in this match. I think just a badass in general, and I think everybody would agree. And I think her Carafuda clutch is, is certainly the 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 most, if not the one of the most protected moves in the business at the moment, and rightly so. And then of course Adam Cole winning the gold, uh, new NXT champion to cap it all off. Like I said, will we see Cole and uh, Gargano three, um, or will we see another potential opponent uh, being lined up as a number one contender for the NXT gold? I mentioned at the very beginning, Matt Riddle, uh, a very good match against Roddy Strong. And um, yeah, um, there is kind of a bit of a feud in the background between uh, Matt Riddle and Adam Cole. Uh, If you remember back probably a a month or so where Matt Riddle interrupted Adam Cole at a photo shoot uh, backstage on an episode of NXT TV. that Matt Riddle has been kind of involved as a bit of a, uh, a friend of Johnny Gargano in the run-up to this match with Adam Cole. Um, so kind of Matt Riddle's kind of always been on the periphery, on the fringes in this Adam Cole and Gargano feud. So I think that could develop into maybe Matt Riddle being a future contender to Adam Cole's uh, title. I don't think we've seen the end of Cole and Gargano's rivalry. Um, I don't think it deserves another takeover main event, which is where I'd like to see somebody like a Matt Riddle be a contender against Adam Cole. Um, but I do think we've possibly got a third match in there between Cole and Gargano, uh, maybe on an up-and-coming um, uh, TV uh, NXT TV, and, and we might find out more from this week's tapings at Full Sail. As mentioned, the next NXT TakeOver will take uh, take place over SummerSlam weekend in Toronto, Ontario. Um, August the 10th, I've got it down as. So uh, that will, um, that will uh, be the night before SummerSlam uh, that weekend. So uh, once again, back into the usual routine of having a TakeOver ahead of a big WWE pay-per-view. So that's certainly, to, certainly going to be uh, another excellent TakeOver. Uh, never seen a bad TakeOver. Um, but um, yeah... Like I say, personally, I'd like to see Matt Riddle in more of a featured role. We've seen him go up against uh, Velveteen Dream, where he actually lost uh, in his match um, against Dream for the North American Championship. We've seen Riddle's feud with Cassius Ono. So, yeah, let, let's uh, kind of... I think it's time for Matt Riddle to have a, a bigger match, a bigger opponent, um, uh, you know, in a big setting like uh, the, the takeover in uh, Toronto, of course, in August. Um... I also suspect at TakeOver Toronto will get a rematch between Io Shirai and Shayna Baszler. I mentioned earlier how I feel that this is kind of ripe for a rematch, and I think it's going to be more of a gimmick match, to be honest with you, with uh, kendo sticks and steel chairs involved, and uh, maybe maybe a, a steel cage as well to keep um, the other two members of the Horsewomen out. Um, you've got to look at um, other 
key or top NXT superstars that have not had uh, much time um, on the brand or much of an opportunity at takeovers that I'd like to see more of. Like I say, you do seem to see the same old names and a lot of the matches do seem to be kind of a little bit repetitive with regards to the people within some of these matches on takeovers. And and yeah, um, look at a Keith Lee. I know that he's recently had an injury. Uh, it'd be great to see him uh, in a featured match on a takeover. He's been with the brand now for well over a year, and he's not really been kind of featured in anything more than the odd TV match here and there. Um, he's had matches with Cassius Ono and one or two others. Uh, there was a really good feud build in between him and Dominic Dijakovic before Dijakovic went out. Um, so Dijakovic is out injured at the moment. Keith Lee was out injured um, before that. Um, so it's just been kind of circumstances and kind of unfortunate events that have led to these two not really having uh, a more prominent role on a takeover in a takeover match. Hopefully it will lead to that uh, fairly soon. It'd be great to see these two on a takeover card. Um, Kushida fairly new to the black and gold brand and uh, it would be great to see him in a featured match on a takeover another um, fresh opponent for somebody a uh, Damien Priest we saw a promo package for him um, earlier on uh, in, uh, in in this episode takeover uh, 25 and it'd be great to see who they align uh, Damien Priest with or who they put him up against um, possibly you know on NXT TV and we'll probably find out more at this week's TV tapings at Full Sail it was also announced on Saturday night um, just before the main event of TakeOver 25 that it's going to be another NXT UK TakeOver now the first one was uh, from early January this year uh, in Blackpool in an excellent show and people that attended are really really raved and uh, you know it was it was Amazing to see uh, just uh, on my TV screen, let alone how good it was to be there in person. Uh, the Empress Ballroom, a very kind of intimate, uh, grand setting for such an event. But uh, this is going to be NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff. So I can only assume that it's going to take place at the maybe the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff. Um, I don't think it will take place at the uh, Millennium Stadium. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to. Well, they probably could pack 40 or 50,000 um, for an NXT UK TakeOver. It's, it's not been confirmed the location of the venue yet but I I would suspect it'd be at the motor point but um, I've been there before and it's not the biggest of uh, indoor arenas to be honest with you and I would suspect they'd be able to kind of sell that out very very quickly which is a shame because I know that I missed out on getting tickets for the Blackpool event. Um, tickets seem to sell out in under five minutes back in January. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if it's the tickets sell out for the Motor Point Arena, for example, just as quick. Um, but I will certainly look at get, getting tickets for that. But uh, one thing that kind of stuck, stuck out when this was announced, well, this is taking place on the 31st of August. And it's going to take place on exactly the same evening as the next AEW pay-per-view, which will be All Out. Um, a year from the um, inaugural All In show, which took place uh, last August. And uh, that was before the AEW brand was kind of uh, born. Um, but this is going to be AEW's second pay per view after their very successful Double or Nothing pay per view from last weekend. Uh, and this is going to be all out um, matches that uh, have already already been rumoured or scheduled for that would feature Chris Jericho versus Adam Page for the AEW World Championship, uh, possibly Kenny Omega versus uh, John Moxley. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, those two matches alone are enough to kind of um, sell that card for me or sell that show for me. Now, if you're watching NXT UK TakeOver from home, then great, you get to see NXT UK TakeOver on the WWE Network, and then uh, you, you, you then pretty much go straight into the AEW All Out show if you buy that on Not in Pay Per View. Um, if you're going to see NXT UK TakeOver live, then you'll have to rush to get home before All Out starts around about midnight or 1am, but it is doable, and it looks like say, good that there are different different time zones that you could potentially catch uh, both shows back to back but it's also a third show taking place in London I believe and it's uh, New Japan uh, coming to the UK and they've got a, a Royal Quest uh, show uh, which uh, tickets been on sale for for quite a while um, and that will obviously have quite a strong card with a lot of uh, familiar New Japan regulars taking place on that card the, the Royal Quest show uh, but uh, if you're attending that, you won't be able to see NXT UK TakeOver Live. So you'll have to make a choice there. Um, but uh, nevertheless, it's going to be a very, very high profile weekend. A very, very busy weekend for wrestling fans. 
uh, but we'll be spoilt for choice. Uh, lots to talk about over that weekend, no doubt, and uh, lots of uh, extra episodes uh, of the podcast uh, on Wrestling With Jonas. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, special review show of uh, NXT TakeOver 25, the 25th TakeOver in the uh, TakeOver franchise the takeover series from nxt and once again it was a tremendous show i've never seen a bad nxt takeover our next episode of, of wrestling with Jonas will be dropping on all uh, popular podcast platforms around about uh, thursday so in a few days time and it will of course focus on this week's episode of nxt uk where you've got the, the fatal four-way match between joe coffee jordan devlin dave mastiff and travis banks so that's the, the four uh, competitors. And it's not just a fate of four-way match. The winner will be the new number one contender for the WWE UK Championship. And, of course, the current champion is uh, is Walter. Um, we will also be covering NXT, uh, which I believe will feature the two pre-show matches that I mentioned earlier on. Um, and, of course, it's the, the kind of the rubber match. Match number three between uh, Mia Yim and Bianca Belair. Um, will feature, I should imagine, this week's um, NXT TV show. And, of course, Keith Lee versus Kona Reeves. Uh, but that's all to come in uh, this week's uh, regular episode of Wrestling With Jonas, which will be episode 48. So we're, we're getting ever closer to our 50th episode, and uh, I'm loving everything that I'm doing with uh, Wrestling With Jonas, whether it be the social media pages, uh, the recording of the podcast, covering all the uh, all the big pay-per-views and special shows, and having a lot of the, the, the listeners and the followers um, of uh, Wrestling With Jonas on to guest host. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, loving every minute of it. No signs of me slowing down or stopping um, and uh, things with Wrestling with John is just going to get bigger and better so stay tuned and don't miss an episode so I hope that you've enjoyed this episode uh, if you did please don't forget to hit like don't forget to hit subscribe and share and shout about this podcast tell your friends and tell your family like I always say and ke- keep listening to Wrestling with John for all of your weekly NXT UK NXT WWE Progress Wrestling Uh, AEW updates Uh, without you sharing and subscribing to this podcast we can't grow and improve so hit like and subscribe now people do it Uh, we'll be back again Thursday as I mentioned uh, with another episode of NXT and NXT UK Um, plus all the top news and opinions from this uh, beautiful world of professional wrestling Um, so once again thank you for tuning in Uh, in the meantime take care speak to you all soon